When you declare a data item, you can also apply modifiers to that declaration that specifies something further about the declaration. These modifiers don't make any sense when used inside a method because the variables appear and disappear as the method is called. These are the modifiers that can be applied to any data items, including arrays, that are declared outside of any method. A simple declaration of an int data type looks like this. This variable can not only be accessed throughout the class, it can also be accessed from any class that's defined in this package. That's the default if you don't specify an access. You can broaden the access to anywhere by declaring the item as public like this. Anybody that can access this class can also address this variable, but you can restrict access to a variable to only this one class like this. With a private access declared, only the members of this class can address this data item by name. This is so restrictive that even the subclasses of this class can't address it. They inherit it in the sense that it exists in the superclass, but there is no way to directly address it in the subclass. You can fix that by declaring it as protected. This is exactly the same as private, except now the variable is acceptable inside the subclass. You recall that when an object exists, the class for that object is also loaded into memory. You can have your data items exist only in the class definition in memory by declaring them as static. If you don't specify a data item as static, it is dynamic, and one copy of it comes into existence with every object created from the class. This makes a big difference. If an object has its private copy of a variable, then it has complete control over its contents. If, on the other hand, a variable is static and exists only as the one variable inside the class, it can be updated by every object of that class, so the value can change almost at random. Another way to think of it is that static data is global data, and non-static data is local. It has been my experience that beginning Java programmers use a lot of static data items, but the usage falls off with experience. I'm not trying to say that using static data is bad, it's just that it happens less with experienced programmers. You can make a variable into a named constant value by using the final keyword. When you declare a variable as final, its value can never be changed. When you declare a data item as final, you must supply an initial value with it because that value cannot be changed later. It is now a constant. Later on, I'm going to be describing how threads work. When you run more than one thread, you have more than one line of execution going on inside your program. If you have a data item that could have its value changed by one thread and possibly used by another, you need to declare that item as volatile. This really has nothing to do with your program or how you should write it. This is a notification to the compiler that it should always load a fresh copy of the value instead of just trusting an old value that's been laying around somewhere. It reduces the efficiency of the code a bit by preventing some optimization, but who cares about efficiency when the numbers are all coming out wrong? Java provides the ability to serialize objects. That is, it can take a running object and pack it up in a form so it can be easily transmitted from one location to another. However, some data items are just used for workspace and it's pointless to pack them up for shipping. If you mark these variables as transient, their values will be ignored and they won't be serialized. You can use more than one modifier on a data declaration as long as no two of them conflict. For example, one common pair is final static. One makes the value constant, the other causes there to be just one copy of it the one in the class definition. I mean, you only need one copy of a constant value because all you're going to do is read it. The order of the modifiers doesn't matter, except that they all must come before the data type declaration. And the data type declaration must come right before the name of the data item being declared.